Hi there and welcome back to Silver Lining Art. My name is Anish. Now a lot of you watching this channel might know me as a watercolor artist, but I'm also a scientist and I love to cook. Actually my Instagram bio has been saying scientist, watercolor artist, home cook for a while now. So in this video I want to put all three of my passions together and tell you exciting things about this plant, the same plant. Brassica oleracea. A lot of people might also describe me as a DNA scientist, a geneticist, or a molecular biologist, and that is why I find this plant so interesting. Brassica oleracea, uh, it was a small uh, herb found in the Mediterranean, and then uh, humans discovered it, and we saw that it had a great potential to become domesticated and be a part of our diets. So why this one plant? What makes it so special? So around 3-4 million years ago, uh, this plant, it tripled its genome. That means it tripled all the DNA it had. Yes, plants can do these weird things sometimes. So what the ability that it gives the plant is that it can mutate fast. It can explore more genes uh, or more mutations in their gene without dying. So now imagine for humans, if we have a mutation on a key gene, we might not be able to survive. But if we have a copy of that gene that is not mutated and is functioning, we can continue our function and then explore what these new mutations have to offer without experiencing any drawbacks. And this is what this plant was able to do. Over time, we uh, took different parts of the plant and really bulked them up, we bred them. You can think of it as different breeds of dogs. We have the same, uh, the same way we have these cultivars where a Great Dane and a Chihuahua, even though they're the same species, they look very different. Similarly, a cabbage, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts might look very different, but they are in fact the same species. Now, let's talk about the cabbage. The cabbage is quite interesting. It is actually the, the terminal bud of, uh, of the Brassica oleracea plant. That means it grows on top. But more interesting part is that in a cabbage, distance between two leaves is very, very small. So if you look at the wild type uh, Brassica or even some other plant, you can see that there is a bit of a gap between some leaves and there's a part of a stem in between uh, these leaves and in a cabbage that is very, very small, almost non-existent. And also that this little stem that exists uh, before the leaf starts, uh, that is also very small or absent. And that makes these leaves all clump up together, making a nice sturdy cabbage. Up next, we have the broccoli and the cauliflower. These are both different types of flowers. In broccoli, you actually have a lot of flowering buds clumped together, making them nice and juicy wild type plant is probably not a very good strategy to have so many flowers so clumped up together uh, i also have this different kind of broccoli it was called dimi broccoli uh, way more expensive some kind of hippie broccoli here and you can see it's got much fewer flowers compared to the normal looking broccoli here cauliflower is very interesting as well i'm not sure if it has been studied intensively as arabidopsis it's another model plant uh, that we have studied and uh, we know in Arabidopsis that there's one gene or a couple of genes that regulate uh, the, the flower differentiating into its different parts, the petals, the anther, stem, uh, stigma, all of them. Uh, and the cells have to differentiate, so one type of cell has to become a petal and then another cell has to become a stamen. But in cauliflower, uh, what happens is there is a, a gene that regulates it all. And that gene, if, if that gene has a mutation and doesn't function as well, then you just have this mass of cells that can't really differentiate into different parts of the flower, giving us this really uh, nice uh, chunky clump of cells uh, that we devour as cauliflower. Let's get to Brussels sprouts. Uh, if you are a millennial, there's a really good chance that you do not like Brussels sprouts. And there is more um, agricultural uh, genetics involved in here as well. So Brussels sprouts are these lateral buds. They grow alongside the stem. Now, when we tried to uh, grow them before, what happened was they, some of these buds 
would uh, develop faster and be ready sooner. And so farmers had to go through their farm multiple times harvesting these by hand. Um, however, eventually we figured out a varietal where all the buds, all the process sprouts were ready at the same time and they dramatically increased their agricultural productivity and the efficiency of farming. However, that one varietal was especially bad tasting. Brussels sprouts has a few compounds that don't taste well and when you cook those compounds, they create these sulfur groups, uh, these sulfur compounds that are very stinky. So if you don't cook them well, they don't taste all that good and if you cook them a lot, they might become quite stinky. The Brussels sprouts we get today are uh, more rich in sugars and have fewer stinky compounds and also have really good agricultural productivity. So if you haven't had Brussels sprouts in the past decade or so, I would encourage you to give them another shot. Uh, I think that they are the best when roasted compared to boiled. I think the type of heat you add to the Brussels sprouts and for how long might also impact the uh, way uh, its flavor changes. So I implore you, give this guy another chance. Up next, we have kohlrabi. I don't have kohlrabi in front of me here. Uh, mostly because I didn't know what to do with it. All of these I'll cook later, but I don't want to cook with kohlrabi. Um, but in, fun facts about kohlrabi, it's actually a, a German word that, come, that literally means cabbage turnip. It's, <laughs> it's the stem of the brassica uh, ulracea plant that is swollen to look like a turnip. Uh, it's not a root, it's a stem because you can see the leaves come straight out of it. Uh, leaves only come out of stems. So uh, that, uh, uh, it's actually very interesting in Switzerland, uh, where I live, they have this tradition of carving kohlrabi, just like you carve pumpkins. And they have all this kohlrabi uh, that they've carved, they put little candles on it, and there's a big parade that goes on. Uh, it's really interesting. It's kind of like Halloween and pumpkins, but with kohlrabi instead. You should visit Switzerland in November to witness this event. Hey there, so hope you have enjoyed this video, a combination of science, art, and cooking. I'm excited to devour all of these vegetables that are the same plant. It's all in front of me, and it's still so weird to imagine they're all from the same plant. Interestingly, they are, some varietals can also be quite distinct genetically. So some of them can be up to 20% different genetically to each other. To put that into perspective, uh, humans and chimps are somewhere between two and 4% different and humans and mouse are 20% different. These uh, vegetables can be the same exact species and still be 20% difference. The world of genetics, life science is so exciting. Uh, and always, always blows my mind. Um, so my goal here to this channel is always to uh, showcase beauty, beauty in art, beauty in science. If you enjoy this kind of science -y videos and want to see more of them, please do let me know uh, in the comments below and I will do my best to bring in more science and into my art. And already, I think I already have a lot of science in my art and I will try to identify it whenever I can for you. We'll see you next time.